Aristotle defines rhetoric as the faculty of observing, in any given case, the available means of persuasion. He divides this into technical, rhetorical, and non-technical, extraneous to the art, witnesses, forensic evidence, etc., persuasive means which precede the speaker's intervention. The three technical means of persuasion, or appeals, are based on the three key elements of the rhetorical situation, speaker, subject matter, and audience. Ethos is your character, as communicated through your speech. It is an effect of what you say, not of what who you are. To be persuasive, your ethos must inspire confidence, and rhetorical credibility comes from three projected qualities, good sense, good morals, and good will. Absent any one of them, says Aristotle, and you get less cred, which is why attacking an opponent's character, generally a fallacy in logic, ad hominem, is permissible and often successful in rhetoric. Logos is your argument, covering both the what, the substance, and the how, the style, of your discourse, both the ideas and the words used to convey them. The mark of a persuasive speech is finding in any given case the best possible fit between the two. Pathos refers to the emotions of your audience, anger, pity, fear, patriotism, sympathy, etc. Emotions color judgments and affect outcomes. So to ensure a favorable reception of your logos, try to arouse in your audience those emotions that best fit your subject matter and further your cause. A persuasive speech strikes a fine balance among appeals. Barack Obama's race speech, which won him his presidential nomination in 2008, does so with great poise. It is, for example, quite common for a speaker to use biography in their ethos. Obama does it too. But it also comes from my own story. I'm the son of a black man from Kenya and a white woman from Kansas. But he uses it to tell an American story, meant to remind the audience. This nation is more than the sum of its parts, that out of many, we are truly one. This is an appeal to his audience's patriotism, pathos. The fact is that the comments that have been made and the issues that have surfaced over the last few weeks reflect the complexities of race in this country that we've never really worked through, a part of our union that we have not yet made perfect. His ethos also embodies the idea of racial reconciliation and unity that he argues for in his logos. Now by itself, that single moment of recognition between that young white girl and that old black man is not enough. It is not enough to give health care to the sick or jobs to the jobless or education to our children. But it is where we start. It is where our union grows stronger. And as so many generations have come to realize over the course of the 221 years since a band of patriots signed that document right here in Philadelphia, that is where perfection begins. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. But this perfection requires that Americans overcome racial polarization. So the final anecdote replaces this overcoming in an emotional key, pathos.